Hello, everyone. I'm extremely glad to be welcoming you all to this session on uh, Codeless Bots in Zoho Sales IQ. Uh, we hope you're all staying safe during the pandemic and all of you are in the pink of health. I'm uh, Michelle from the Zoho Sales IQ team, and uh, I'm going to be taking you through this very engaging session on uh, codeless building codeless bots in Zoho Sales IQ. So this is one of the most powerful features inside Sales IQ. So uh, we have our product experts on the panel here to answer your questions, so keep them coming. Uh, but before we move on uh, to the next part of the webinar, I just want to make sure um, I'm audible and my screen is visible to all of y'all. So let me just give you a minute. In case any of you are facing problems, please just post them in the chat and uh, we will take care of that. I hope I'm audible to all of you and none of you are uh, place, uh, facing any uh, audio issues or video issues. Okay, so hoping that everything is uh, well and good. I'm just moving on uh, to the webinar. So first I'll tell you how I've planned out this entire session. So first I'll be talking about what the Codeless Bot platform is. So uh, before all of that, uh, I will be giving you an introduction to what Zoho Sales IQ is. Uh, many of you uh, know what Zoho Sales IQ is, uh, but for those of you who don't know, I'm just gonna be uh, giving you a quick and brief introduction to what Zoho Sales IQ does and um, what Zobots are. And uh, then we move on to what the Codeless Bot is. And then about what controls you have in the codeless bot, how you can uh, use dynamic text, uh, what blocks are in the codeless bot and how they help you collect visitor information and store them, how they help you integrate with other platforms and uh, about bot context and visitor fields and all of that. So uh, little by little, let's move on to uh, uh, the different parts of the webinar. So what is uh, Zoho Sales IQ? So when businesses uh, moved online there were a lot of customer relationships that were getting jinxed because of you know a lot of missed out conversations and uh, uh, delayed responses to messages and this happened to scar customers trust and thus uh, the image of the business itself so this was when we came up uh, with the idea of on-the-go customer engagement and designed Zoho sales IQ which is a hassle-free live chat software that was made to reimagine business growth okay so Zoho Sales IQ is basically a customer engagement and live chat software that can help you prospect, filter, engage, and segment every visitor on your website or on your mobile application. So this one's going to help you boost your sales uh, support and marketing activities on your business website or on your application. Moving on to what the Zobot is. So Zobot is a bot development platform that's available inside Zoho Sales IQ. And uh, with this, Sales IQ users can build a lot of compelling bots to automate customer interactions. So these bots can be programmed to uh, respond to act and to qualify customers that land on your business website. Zobots will maintain a conversation with the visitor in natural language. They understand the intent of what the user is trying to say. And then they send a response based on the business rules and data of the organization. And moreover, they can be run on both websites and on mobile applications. So you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, setting up a new Zobot for your mobile application. So these work for both websites and your mobile apps. And then we have answer bots in Zoho Sales IQ that work based on your resources. That is your uh, articles and your FAQs. And uh, so the stronger your knowledge base, the more efficient these bots will be. And also we have our focus today on the codeless bot platform. That will only require you to build a flowchart using drag and drop components. So this requires absolutely no code. So once the flow is done, Sales IQ is going to do all the bot building for you. So Zoho Sales IQ offers a highly interactive and engaging live chat user interface along with audio calls and many other features on websites and mobile apps, along with bot engines. So everything that you see on the screen uh, are options with respect to bot engines that are provided by Zoho Sales IQ. So uh, when we look into the Zoho uh, platforms, we have the answer bot that we just spoke about that works based on your um, 
resources, your knowledge base. And then we have the Codeless Bot platform. And uh, we have Sales IQ Scripts that functions uh, completely uh, on the basis of Deluge. So uh, Sales IQ Scripts is also one of the most powerful platforms uh, that are available on Zoho Sales IQ to build bots for your website. So everything that you do on the Sales IQ Scripts platform with code can be done on the Codeless Bot platform without having to write any code. That's what's great about the Codeless Bot platform. And uh, then you have webhooks. So if you have a fully built bot engine and you just want to integrate it with Zoho Sales IQ Zobot, you can do so with webhooks. Then you have uh, the NLP platform from Zoho Zia Skills. And with respect to integrations to external platforms, we have uh, Dialogflow if you're an end-to-end Google user, and then you have uh, Watson, IBM Watson Assistant, and we also have Microsoft Azure. So you have a lot of different options with respect to bot building when it comes to Zoho Sales IQ, so that you know you don't have to limit your bot building uh, uh, opportunities to just one platform, your bot building skills to just one platform. So Zoho Sales IQ Zobot basically provides you everything under one roof so that you don't have to maintain and integrate the fragments separately. To summarize, it's one system to rule out the complexity of integration of the UI, the bot engine, and the database, which are the three basic fragments uh, that are available for chatbots in the market. Talking about platforms, let's move on to our main feature today, the Codeless Bot platform. So bot building with minimal or no coding is the need of the art. So we at Zoho Sales IQ are here introducing our Codeless Bot building platform. So with this platform, you can create chatbots in minutes without a line of code. So this platform basically uses something called blocks to collect pieces of information from the user, helps you send personalized messages and performs actions based on their needs. So if coding is the part that worries you when it comes to bot building, then we have your back. This is a bot building platform that makes bot building for non techies a cakewalk. So we know you've been waiting for this. We've been waiting for this for a very long time. Uh, so here we are. So first things first, what is the Codeless Bot platform? So this is a code-free rule-based chatbot builder in Zoho Sales IQ that can create a conversational bot without any coding skills and control conversation flows like a flowchart. So this platform helps you generate more leads. Uh, so you're, you're already generating a lot of leads with Sales IQ. And on top of that, the Codeless Bot is going to increase your uh, lead qualification exponentially it's going to help you capture data and personalize visitor flow in real time with absolutely no complexity. So here you have blocks like button, uh, blocks that I had mentioned before. You have blocks like button, name, email, calendar, location, etc. to collect pieces of information that you need from the visitor to make smart conversations, send personalized messages, and then perform actions based on their needs. So what is so great about the Codeless uh, Bot platform? So there's always a huge upfront cost that's involved with respect to hiring operators for a business, be it support or development. So you can cut down a lot of uh, you can cut down a lot of costs, and you can deploy these Codeless chatbots on your website uh, to assist your visitors. And the no code chatbot platforms make your bot building so much more quicker and efficient with most of the development done for you these platforms only require your development team to focus on features um, you know that enhance the effectiveness of the bots and not on the first level features that require a lot of time and effort and zobots eliminate the need uh, but these codeless bots they eliminate the need for operators to do the same work again and again over time they help you automate a lot of tasks which are frequently done and at the right time this can help you save time and increase productivity while also avoiding errors. Another most important aspect of, of uh, chatbot deployment is security. So you need to have strongly coded bots to make sure your business is not vulnerable to any kind of attack. So with the codeless bot, you can be least worried about the security of your business and of your uh, business website. So what are the highlights of this particular platform? So they are rule-based chatbots. So this is a code-free rule-based chatbot builder. 
in sales iq that can help you create a conversational bot just by designing a flowchart so the platform works on the basis of predefined inputs and keywords so all instructions for the bot are pre-coded by by developers so that you know the bot can act and respond accordingly so the bot will question the visitor provide suggestions as responses and then when the re visitor responds it will analyze the intents in the response and replies contextually and then uh, you can build and make changes to the bot flow anytime without any complexity so this platform will only require you to build a flow chart like i've mentioned multiple times uh, previously based on your requirements for the bot and requires absolutely no code once the flow is done sales iq will do the bot building for you and uh, again the builder has a very very simple drag and drop interface wherein you have to drag elements from the right side of the builder and drop them in something called the card holder inside your building board so once the flowchart is complete with uh, no open links, you can publish the bot then and there, and it'll be fully ready to assist your website visitors. So now that we know what's great about the Codeless Bot platform, I'll quickly show you how you can uh, set up, uh, add a new bot and choose the Codeless Bot platform for your bot building. So let's move on to my uh, Zoho Sales IQ portal. So inside your portal, this is what the all new sales iq 2.0 looks like so we have a fully um, improved and new version of uh, the sales iq dashboard so inside this dashboard you click on settings and you navigate to zobot and you click on add and you give your bot a name and then you choose the platform so here you have all of the options uh, uh, in front of you and uh, you choose the codeless bot builder and once that is done, we click on next and move on to the next part. We provide a description. And then I choose a brand. I choose the brand for which I want to deploy uh, the bot. And then I choose the bot working hours. So I want my bot to function only during non-business hours. And when my operators are offline during business hours. And then I click on next. Then I choose the bot audience. So here the default condition is always set to all visitors and uh, you can add custom rules if you want to. There are a bunch of conditions that you can choose from. But I'm going to stick to all visitors because I want all of my visitors to be supported by the bot when my operators are unavailable. Then I'm going to set when the bot can initiate a chat, when the visitors land on the site, when they click on the chat widget or when they perform a custom action or I also have the option uh, that will uh, ask the bot not to trigger a message to the visitors. So let me say five seconds. All right. And then I set the bot response interval to immediate. And you can configure chat inactivity actions in case you want to send out messages or perform actions when your visitor has been inactive on your uh, business website for a particular amount of time. So you can send them a first warning message uh, in uh, maybe a minute and then uh, send out a message before uh, the bot ends the conversation. And finally, we have the allow handoff to operators. In case uh, in the middle of a bot conversation, the visitor feels like uh, he or she needs more information in that, that particular aspect, then uh, they're going to have the option of uh, talking to a human agent, uh, a human operator from your organization. So only when you enable this option, visitors will be able to uh, connect with a human operator. So once the option is chosen inside uh, the live chat window, these bots will transfer the chats uh, to operators in your organization. So all available operators in your organization will be notified and one of them can pick it up and answer the query. So for this to happen, you need to enable the allow handoff to operators option. And when I'm done with all of this, I'm just going to click on create and my cordless bot has been set up. So this is what the Codeless Bot Builder looks like and uh, this is the drag and drop interface. So we'll talk about the different uh, elements inside the drag and drop interface during later parts of the webinar. So now that we've set up the bot, we'll move on to the next part. So the first topic that we're going to be looking at today is uh, terms used inside the Codeless Bot. So let's look at some important terms that are used in the platform before we move on to the specifics. So first we have cards. 
So the first one uh, is a card. So they define the functions that are performed by the bots. So you can add, uh, remove, and rearrange cards to change uh, the bots functionality. Then you have the card holder. Uh, this is the plus icon that you see inside your bot builder. So this is where you drag and drop or click the block and uh, add it as a card. And uh, the next one is the block. So these are uh, there are a bunch of different blocks that you can choose from. So uh, you can drag and drop the blocks from the block gallery to the board to add them as cards. Then you have connected links. So these are the defined connections. So once executed, the flow will move on uh, to the next card. So right here, it's exactly what you look at. So once uh, uh, you define a connected link, the, once the flow is uh, completed, the flow moves on to the next card. Then uh, you have open links. So these are the undefined connections, the opposite of connected links. So you can add uh, more cards to these open links to continue any particular flow. Then you have uh, the link tag. So this one is used to denote uh, rules or other conditions of the link. And uh, the final one will be the preview uh, option, which lets you preview the working of the bot as you may use it. So every step of the way, you can keep reviewing your operations, reviewing your building, and uh, you can be uh, super sure before you publish the bot on your website, before it starts picking up chats from your visitors. So this is what the preview option is for. So now that we know what the codeless bot terms are, let's move on to what controls you have inside the codeless bot builder. So the first control that you have drag and drop uh, control. So adding new block uh, blocks inside the cordless bot builder is actually a cinch. So you can add new cards to the flow by selecting them uh, from the block gallery or dragging and dropping them above the card holder, which is uh, the plus icon. So we have a quick video that will demonstrate uh, the feature. This is what the drag and drop uh, feature looks like. The next one will be uh, link attach and detach. So re you can reuse existing flows that were previously created by simply dragging and dropping the card holder into the required uh, card in that flow. So if you want to modify the flow or you want to add more options, you can break the flow by using the detach link that will appear when you hover over the uh, uh, flows link. Then uh, you have the auto arrange control. So if you want to declutter and reorganize your flow board, uh, you can do that using the auto arrange option. So this can help you get a clear view of every uh, sub flow inside your uh, flow chart. So do you see the way uh, all of these uh, elements are being uh, rearranged inside the board? So this is what auto arrange does for you. Then you have uh, the zoom uh, control. So using the zoom option, you can magnify the flow to get a clear picture based on your device's uh, screen size, or you can minimize the size if you want to uh, get full visibility of the, the flow and all that. Then you have uh, the delete control. So you can also delete cards of your choice during bot building. So to delete a card, you need to click on the bin icon at the top right corner of the corresponding card. And then again, click on delete uh, to confirm the deletion. So do you see the small bin icon right here? So that's, uh, that's what you have to click if you want to delete a particular card. You'll see that on top of every card that you add inside the builder. Then we have uh, previewing and publishing control. So you can keep reviewing your flows in real time, like I'd already mentioned, as and when you build the bot using um, the bot preview option. So all you have to do is click on the eye icon at the bottom right corner of the builder, and the preview window will open up highlighting uh, the current flow. So once the bot flow is complete, you can click on the publish button on the top right corner, uh, the one that you see here, to publish the bot on your website. You can publish the bots only if there are no more open links. So make sure you don't have any open links before you publish the bot on your website. The bot builder will not let you publish your bot if you have any open links. So make sure all of them are closed. 
Then come blocks. So what is the block gallery? So the cordless bot platform offers a quick and efficient drag and drop interface using which you can choose blocks from the right side of the builder, drag them and drop them inside the flow. So this block gallery is a, actually a collection of enriched UI elements and actions that's offered by Zoho Sales IQ and can be used while interacting with the visitor. So there are four categories of blocks that you can, four or five categories of blocks that you can choose from. The first one being response blocks. So these are used to collect information from the visitor to complete uh, the flow. Then you have input blocks and uh, then you have, uh, as the which as the name implies, can be used to collect inputs. Then you have action blocks to perform actions based on the visitor's needs and the information collected so far in the flow. Then you have data blocks that help you collect a lot of type-based information like uh, name, email, phone number, website, etc. from the visitor and store them as per your flow. Finally, we have integration blocks to perform integration related operations like, you know, mail subscriptions, uh, ticket creation, lead creation, etc. So these integration blocks work based on the integration configuration. So you don't have to do any additional uh, configuration or authentication uh, at this point. So here are the list of blocks under each category. So we'll be talking about each of these uh, blocks in our webinar today. So here are the input blocks. You have button options, multiple options, calendars, sliders, and here are our data blocks and integration blocks. So let's move on to the first category of blocks, response blocks. So what are these? Uh, what do these blocks do? So this category of blocks can help you collect information from your visitor to complete the flow. So here are the list of uh, available options. So the first, first we have a quick reply. So with this, you can send quick informative messages. You can uh, send out uh, different uh, text elements to your visitor's question or your choice. You can share rich text. So to add this uh, block to the flow, let me show this to you inside the UI. So I'll show you how to add cards, uh, one card from each category. So here we are inside the UI. So if you want to add a quick reply block, you click on the card holder and your uh, block gallery opens up. So from here, I just drag and drop my element. And here I will give my reply card a name. And then I add a message. So I've just added a message and I can add any attachments if I want to. And I can also uh, use dynamic text inside this section. So let me just try and use one. So I'm just going to use visitor name. So that uh, the message that, I, that the bot sends out to the visitor is a little personalized. So I configure a message and I add attachments if I want to and finally click on save. And that's it. My uh, reply card has been added to the bot flow. So it's as, as easy as this uh, if you want to add any card to the bot builder. This is the case with all of the cards. So I'm just going to be showing you one uh, uh, card from each category. All right. So this is the quick, quick reply card. So after you click save, you can view the card on the bot builder page. Next, we have articles. So uh, this particular card will let you share articles from your knowledge base uh, with a visitor. So it's the same thing again. You give your article a name. You add any image if you want to, if you want to keep your conversation appealing. And then you add the message of your choice, which will be the prefix text. And then you choose the articles uh, that you want to uh, share with your visitors and finally click on save. Then you have uh, the video card, which lets you share videos. So you give it a name, your image, and finally you enter the URL of the video that you want to share with your visitor and click on save. And you also uh, can enable the autoplay option if you want to share the visitor, uh, share the video to the visitor and you want it to play automatically. Then we have uh, input blocks. So what do we have inside input blocks? The first one uh, that we have is the button card. So here 
So you can give multiple options uh, in the replies for visitors from uh, to uh, choose from, and then you can create a flow based on the visitor's choice. So let me show you how to add a button card. So here we are inside the input block uh, category, and all you have to do is just drag and drop it here. So I already have some default text defined here for me. So here's the uh, default message and here are the three different uh, button texts that are configured by default. So I can make changes to these uh, as per my requirements. So let me say need to book a holiday. And I can click on save and my button card has been added. So uh, each of these options will be uh, given a separate uh, flow. So it will be easier for you to add cards to that particular flow uh, very, very quickly. So that's how you add a button card. Then you have the option card. So this one can be used to uh, get a lot of required information for specific details. So you can present visitors with a lot of different options and then get their responses. So the main difference between uh, an option card and a button card is that the button card can create multiple flows based on the visitor's response that we uh, like we just looked at. Whereas the option card can be used to collect information from visitors and enrich the conversation. Then we have uh, multiple options. So the multiple options block uh, actually provides a checklist style uh, option that lets users, uh, visitors pick one or more choices. So uh, you can have a minimum of one and a maximum of three options uh, that uh, the visitors can choose. So this can be used to get more information from the visitor using a single card. Then you have the calendar card. So this one allows visitors to pick a time slot and date to schedule events. So there are two different types of calendar cards. Uh, there are the single date and you have date range. So the single date calendar allows you to pick the exact date and time uh, for the event, whereas the range calendar will allow you to choose a range of days. So the single date option, like I said, lets you uh, pick a particular date and time. So this can be used to fix appointments uh, or schedule events, etc. So once this is configured, visitors will be able to uh, select the desired date and time using the calendar widget. And the date range lets you choose a range of dates. So, so this um, can be used to book flights or you know plan a trip, etc. So when you're when this is configured visitors will be able to select the desired date range using the calendar widget then comes the slider card that uh, allows you to get a required number from the visitor so um, then you have a rating to obtain any feedback about your brand or the conversation from the visitor uh, the rating card can be used by the bot and finally Finally, you have the location card that can help you get visitors uh, current location using the GPS system on their device. So adding all of these cards inside the bot builder is similar uh, to the one that I had just uh, demonstrated. So uh, you only have to configure a bunch of different information um, uh, according to the cards that you choose. So then we have action blocks. So the codeless bot platform in the Zobot offers actions that are similar to the ones in the sales IQ scripts platform. So these action blocks can be used to perform actions based on the visitor's needs and information uh, that has been collected so far in the flow. So, so let's look at each of these action blocks one by one. The first one is the criteria router. So this can be used to split the bot's conversation flow into different flows based on custom rules defined using the visitor's information. So this card helps you simplify your complex routing processes by letting you add multiple rules uh, for different criteria. So here we are. 
So here's the criteria router. So you can add different rules by choosing the conditions uh, that are listed here. So you have uh, context variables, you have current page title. So I'll be talking about bot context uh, and visitor field uh, variables uh, during a later part of this session. So otherwise you can choose from different conditions like website details, like technology, the browser operating system, all right, the so country, visitor availability. So you have a huge list of conditions that you can choose from. So uh, when, you when you set rules based on these conditions, the bot is going to split the flows inside your um, main flow uh, accordingly. Then you have uh, the forward card. So as the name implies, uh, the forward card can be used to let your bot hand over visitor conversations to an available operator seamlessly. So all operators available in the portal will be notified about the incoming chat and one of them can choose to pick it up and answer it. So once you've added the flow uh, card, uh, you have three possible flows. So the first one is offline hours. So this flow is used when the card is activated outside the company's business hours. And then you have uh, operator not available. So this one is used when the map operators are busy or are not available at the time of uh, forward. Then you have invalid operators. So this flow is used when the mapped operators are disabled or deleted from the portal. And uh, on forwarding the chat to other department operators, uh, the chat fails due to their unavailability. Then you have the block card that can be used to block spammers and harassers when they initiate conversations on the website. So all of these actions are pretty much similar to the ones that are offered on the Zoho Sales IQ scripts platform. Then you have the operator busy uh, card. So in case all operators in your organization are busy or are unavailable at the time a chat is routed to an operator or a department, the operator busy action allows visitors to leave a message before the chat is ended. So these chats will also be marked as missed uh, inside your portal. Then you have the end card. Uh, so you can use this to end an ongoing visitor bot conversation. Then you have something called the go to card. So this is uh, different from the list of uh, actions that were similar to the ones in the sales IQ scripts platform. So this one will switch the flow back to a particular card. So all you have to do is specify the targeted card and activate the go to card. So let me show you how you can add uh, a go to card. So let me just say, I want to add a card here, a go to card here. So let me click on this and I will give my card a name and I will choose the uh, target card. So the target cards uh, in the drop down will be the list of cards that you have already added to your uh, flow. So let me just uh, say I want to route it back to quick reply card two, and I click on save. So my flow from here will be routed back to the quick reply card two. So uh, this is just an example of how you can uh, route uh, chats to a particular block using the go to card. So you can uh, perform this particular action using the card when you have a more detailed flow or you have repetitive subflows inside your main flow. All right. Then come uh, the plugs card. So plugs in Zoho Sales IQ is actually a function that has configured inputs and configured output. So these uh, plugs can actually be implemented using uh, Deluge uh, scripts. And this particular integration is supported inside the Codeless Bot platform. So uh, we will be having uh, detailed webinars uh, in the future on uh, uh, features like plugs. So we'll talk about those in detail during those uh, webinars. So as of now, this particular card called plugs can be used to perform one set of operations that are defined in a plug by simply providing the values that are required for the plug to work. Like I said, plugs in sales IQ are a function uh, with configured inputs and outputs. So here you choose the plug that you want to associate from the drop down, like you see here. So you already create plugs inside Zoho sales IQ uh, inside the plug section and uh, all of the plugs that you have created inside your plug section will be uh, listed here in the drop down and you can choose the plug of your choice and then you define the plug input and output fields. 
All right, so you can store the return values from the plug in bot context on uh, success. So there are two possible flows upon uh, the plug cards uh, triggering. So the flows can be either used, they can be used in two ways. The first one is a success flow. This is to add cards upon successful execution of the plug. And then you have failure to add cards in case of plug failure. So this can happen due to uh, wrong usage or values or other technical reasons. Then you have the send email card that allows the bot to send emails during a visitor bot conversation. So this can also be used to send details of the ongoing bot conversation. Again, there are two possible flows upon execution of the send email card. The first is the success to add cards after the mail is sent out successfully. And then there's failure uh, to add cards in case of failure due to uh, technical reasons. So with that, we've uh, come to the end of uh action blocks now we move on to data blocks so what are data blocks so data blocks in the cordless bot platform can be used to collect type based information like name email phone website etc from the visitor and then store them as per your flow so the details collected using these uh, data cards will be automatically updated to the sales IQ portal based on the configuration that you have set So let's look at these cards one by one. The first one is the name card. So as the name implies, this card can be used to get the name of the visitor during a bot conversation. So, all right, so let me choose this particular flow and I want to add a name card right here. So I give it a name, I can add an image. I'm entering my message. So here we have an option called allow visitor to skip in case a visitor wants to skip this question. You need to check this particular box. And here you have a hint text. Right. And here we have the default value. And uh, we also have uh, an error message configured here. So you can change this. Uh, error message if you want to or stick to the default message and once all of this is done i'm just going to click on save and my name card will be saved successfully so whenever you want to edit the configuration inside any of these cards all you have to do is click on the card and then make all the changes and finally click on save the next block is the email data card that can be used to collect the email of the visitor during a bot visitor conversation then you have uh, the phone card uh, that will be used to collect the visitor's phone number during the bot conversation. And um, then you have visitor fields. So this can be used to collect other data fields that can be used to enrich the visitor's conversation uh, or the visitor's profile or help your bot assist visitors better. So the different data types that can be collected are email, phone, again, uh, URL or um, numbers that is if you want to get specific numeral values then uh, if you you can use uh, your strings if you want to get content in text format and then you have uh, password to receive password from visitors and uh, this password will actually be masked uh, and won't be visible anywhere in the ui so you don't have to be worried about security so these are the uh, different data types that can be collected using visitor fields Then you have integration blocks. So integration blocks in the codeless bot platform can be used to perform integration related operations like mail subscriptions, ticket creation, lead creation, etc. So these blocks work based on the integration configuration. So if you have any integrations previously, uh, you can link them with the codeless bot platform using these integration blocks. So the first integration block that we're going to be looking at is the add to mailing list block. So this one can add visitors to integrated campaign services like Zoho campaign and MailChimp. So once the card is activated, the visitor will be added to the mailing list associated with the integrated campaign service. So upon the execution of this card, there will be two possible flows. 
one is success to add cards after successful execution and the second one is failure uh, to add cards in case of you know uh, subscription failure due to technical reasons so let me choose this particular flow and i want to choose the add to mailing list card so here i will choose a variable i will choose an email and then i'll again choose the phone the variable for phone and then i can also choose the audience id and once i'm done with all of that i just click on save and my add to mailing list card will be saved here so like i had mentioned we have two different flows here success and uh, failure so you can list different flows for each of these uh, conditions then you have the associate lead card so this one will allow the bot to associate a crm lead to a crm contact so once the card is activated the crm lead will be converted to a contact inside the integrated crm service so here you need to define the input field which will be uh, the company name that you see right here and the output field which is the lead id and uh, in one uh, advanced error handling section lets you uh, activate two different options so the first one is integration not active and the second one is crm record already exists so this will allow the bot uh, were to display an error message when the mentioned conditions uh, are true then you have associate contact so this one will let the bot associate a contact with an account so once the card is activated your crm contact will be associated to an account inside the integrated uh, crm service here you need to define the output field which is the contact id and uh, the variables that are added in this section will be available in the list of bot context variables like we had just uh, looked at earlier and inside the advanced error handling section you have the integration not active option then you have associate deal which will allow the bot to associate contacts with a particular deal so once the card is activated your crm contact will be associated to a deal inside the integrated crm service so here your input fields will be the stage of the deal to be uh, created the date the amount contact id and then you have the output field which is the deal id uh, so the variables again uh, that you add in this section will be available in the list of bot context variable and you again have the advanced error handling section Then finally, you have the associate uh, ticket card. So this one will allow the bot to assign a ticket to a desk user based on the integration configuration. So here you need to define the input fields, uh, the subject, the status, priority, classification, uh, department, the assignee ID, and then you have output fields, the ticket ID and ticket number. And here inside the advanced error handling section, you have three different options. You have integration not active you have invalid desk department and you have invalid ticket assignee option and this will allow the bot to display error messages when the uh, conditions mentioned above are true moving on to the next and uh, the final topic bot context and visitor fields so you can configure your bot to store information temporarily or permanently using the codeless bot platform. And for that, you have two different options. So the first one is saving in the visitor field and the second one is saving in bot context. So when we were configuring uh, the different options here, you would have seen two different checkboxes, save in visitor field and save in bot context. So this is what I'm going to be talking about right now. So first, let's talk about saving in the context. So using certain elements in the codeless bot platform, you can store the information that was collected inside the bot context temporarily till the visitor or the bot ends the conversation. So this information can be further used across flows to make different decisions. So in order to execute this, you will have to choose the save in bot context option and you have to provide a field name and then you click on save. 
Then comes the second option, which is save in visitor fields. So the bot context is a data definition that is used to collect multiple inputs to perform a single action. So information that is collected by the bot can also be permanently stored as custom visitor fields and then used in integrated services like Zoho Desk, Zoho CRM, Salesforce, etc. So the following are the different output params. Uh, so you have button, you have option, multiple option, calendar, slider, rating, location, slots, uh, quick reply, articles, videos, etc. So you have two different options with respect to that. So this is an example of uh, a field name that you can give. So in case I want to store uh, the date of the appointment or the date of the event, I have a field name called event.date where uh, the information will be stored and then I click on save. So with this, we've come to the end of our webinar. So uh, throughout the webinar, we had looked at what Zoho Sales IQ is and uh, what the Zobot uh, platform in Zoho Sales IQ offers, what, uh, what's so great about the Codeless Bot platform, what controls you have, what different blocks you can use to collect information from the visitor and how to store uh, information from the visitor temporarily or permanently during a conversation. So like David Cancel says, bots and chats make it easier for people to buy the way they want to when they want to and that should be the goal of any business so if you own a business and you're looking to upgrade it then zoho sales iq's zobot especially the codeless bots uh, are your uh, one solution head over to our developer documentation for more information on the zobot also don't forget to uh, visit our sample scripts page for more customized scripts um, in case of any queries regarding the same uh, maybe during any part of the webinar if you had a question uh, that you couldn't ask us, drop us an email at support at zohosalesiq.com and also follow us on Twitter for more updates on our features. So we will be answering all of the questions that you had posted in our questions section uh, as soon as possible. In case uh, we're not able to answer them uh, anytime soon, we will write back to you via email. And uh, don't worry if you've missed out any part of the webinar, if you weren't able to follow any part of the webinar, we're going to be sending you uh, the recording of the webinar and the slide deck uh, uh, with a follow up email. So I hope all of you enjoyed the webinar. Uh, I will see you in the next webinar. If you have any more questions, please keep them coming. We'll try and answer them as soon as possible. So until I see you in the next webinar, stay safe and uh, take care. Thank you.